the center axis runs down the second toe and down the middle of the cone and there's more on the lateral or the outside than there is on the medial side. The same on the back that um, there's a, the, the axis of the last runs top and bottom all the way through and um, so what I can do is I can put the axis on the cubist Picasso last and that line should still be there when I'm finished and it equally runs underneath. Um, and uh, so the whole thing is a last is, is, is a, a way we make them. They're foot shaped, they're crooked, so that they're not, a, it's not symmetrical. There's much more scoop where the shoe it is held on. And so as I'm going through the saw, I'm removing the quarters, the bit that were, would hold the shoe on. So the foot is very narrow underneath the ankle bones and around the Achilles tendon. So I'm removing all the wood there so that the, the last is nice and narrow and therefore the shoe is nice and narrow and holds it on. The range and the arch support, the range is where the flat surface of the front is. That needs to be skimmed and round. So you see as I'm cutting, gradually the bark disappears because I'm making the crown, that is the round shape of the range of the front of the last. Um, so it's curved in many directions. I'm also making it so when you look from the end, it looks straight, even though it's a dynamic shape. I'm roughing out the heel sheet, so all the, the it's kind of a round profile. It, looking from the back, it's still straight. I'm scooping it out over the metatarsal bones of the instep. What I'm uh, doing, actually, is I'm not carving a last as a piece of sculpture. I'm carving the inside of the shoe. I'm making a tool that will make a shoe. And when I'm carving, I'm not actually thinking about the last, I'm thinking about the shoe. And so I'm cutting off bits of wood so that I'm making an inside of the shoe that will hold the foot where it needs to be held, give it room where it needs room, create a nice toe shape where the, there's emptiness in front of the toes so that it looks as elegant as possible. So we got the, the, the scoop and ultimately I want to have a line, a scoop that runs around the lateral side over the vamp and then low over the, the hallux, the big toe. So what you're seeing is the blade is never buried more than a couple of millimeters of wood. In fact, I'm once I've got the bulk of the wood off, I'm using the blade like a, a rasp or a carving machine. I'm u the blade is just skimming the wood and never burying itself more than about two millimeters. In other words, the wood will break away much more easily than the wood will be grabbed. If you go too deep, the, you know, the blade can grab the wood and, and, and pull it in. So you don't do that. The blade is just being used like a, a surface wood removing uh, rasp. And so that's the trick, is to learn to move the wood through in smooth flowing shapes that create contours and only taking off one or two millimeters at a time. You know, you've got plenty of time, it's fast, you just keep moving and it's effortless. You don't let the blade do any work other than just remove the surface of the wood. And that way, gradually the shape emerges. The mistake people make is trying to go too deep and doing too much in one cut. And you don't need to do that. You just skim in, skim in, skim in, skim in, 
and you get there in, in four or five cuts uh, just as fast as if you tried to do one cut in, all at once.